We are here with Dr. Thangavel. How are you? I'm well. How are you? VP of Clinical Strategy at Wiser Care. Mm -hmm. Uh, so tell us, uh, tell us first about yourself, a little bit about your background, and then want to hear about uh, what Wiser Care is and, and the mission that you're on. I am an internal medicine physician uh, by training. I did all my training in San Francisco, um, and I moved to the East Coast for a little bit after that to do some global health work at the State Department. Uh, during that time, I also got hooked up with this company called Wiser Care, uh, which is really focused on some of the most I think some of the pressing needs that I found during my training in internal medicine, which is incorporating patient preferences into overall care. So what's better, the East or West Coast? Because you clearly, <laughs> you're back on the, the West yeah. Coast now, but you've been on the East Coast. Well, so. I put in my East Coast dues, and I got to okay. say the West Coast has, it's more me. You know. Okay. Yeah. And you were, you said State Department, so. I was in the State Department. I did undergrad out here on the East Coast, so I feel so, like I have some, so, some under my belt. So give us a little insight. Um, First of all, to Wiser Care mm -hmm. and, and what mission you're on, what problem you're trying to solve. Sure. Uh, so the main problem that Wiser Care is trying to solve is the problem of aligning patient care to the patient. Think about a medical article that you've read recently that's talking about a new chemotherapeutic and how much extra life you're going to get by being on this chemotherapeutic. It's on the order of days, weeks, months, and nothing is really said or little is said about the potential side effects of this blockbuster drug. It strikes me that if you look in the medical literature, there's not much about whether a particular treatment is really right for a patient. Does the patient actually feel better after the treatment? Does the patient have a better quality of life? Are the patient's goals and wishes and aspirations fulfilled? At some point in medicine, we lost track of that, and now we focus much more on the specific nuanced it's very small things like mortality, mm. so like very small mortality differences, when we should really be getting back to treating the patient as a patient and not as a disease. From the clinician's perspective, who's also in uh, the innovation world, you're building solutions now as well. Um, take us out to that perspective, you know, in terms of what the biggest challenges you're seeing. Training right now, medical training, is really focused around treating a patient in a given setting, a known setting, and extrapolating all health outcomes from there. But we know that patients don't live in the bubble of the hospital or the bubble of the clinic. They live out in the real world. Mm -hmm. So trying to translate uh, what we know about medicine to make it work with the patient's real life in the real world is the biggest challenge. Um, part of that is because we simply don't have the infrastructure right now to really treat patients where they, where they might be. We can't go to a patient's home. More and more, uh, we're having more and more services that are being given to patients in their home uh, that might be able to overcome some of these barriers. But from a medical point of view, all you know is the clinic and the hospital, and those are capacity-constrained environments. So how do you get around that? So is the, the future that home care uh, rapidly accelerates take us out into the future and predictions? Oh, yeah. I think that there will be very few situations for which you'll use the hospital. I think that home care will be the de facto measure of care for almost all men. Nobody patients. wants to go to the go to the hospital. People don't right? want to go now. Right. I can't imagine in the future why it would be any different. Right. Um, so you have an interesting background. You you know, government, state department, um, clinician. Um, and, and innovation world with, with Wiser Care. Uh, give us a little insight to those different worlds and, and um, how they can be leveraged to, to really speed up innovation from your perspective. Uh, sure. Uh, I think that every, every physician who's trained in an academic medicine environment, many, many physicians, all have a great clinical understanding of medicine. They know how to treat patients, and they know how to, they know what to do if a patient's sick. Uh, but I think a lot of physicians feel frustration when they're just put in that role of treating patients who are sick without any sort of societal context, policy context, or innovations context. They can't change the system, they can just work within the system. So I think that for uh, even though it might seem disparate that I was working at the State Department and now I'm working in innovations at a technology company, I think of it as part and parcel of the same thing. You're trying to change the underlying system in which you work to make it better, knowing that you have a particular skill that you can impart to make that system in some way function. What tools and technologies do you use as a, as a doctor, hmm, yeah. um, either in your everyday life or, or that you think are really getting it in terms of health, wellness, healthcare? Yeah. Well, I use, uh, so I am a junkie for data. So I use uh, a lot of different apps to collect uh, to, to heart rate information, blood pressure variation, heart rate variation. Even now, we don't know what to do with all that information. Mm. We know, for example, that uh, 
if you record somebody's blood pressure throughout the entire day, there's going to be variations up and down. But none of the none of the um, uh, guidelines are based on that information, right? All the guidelines are based on single point blood pressure readings in a clinic environment. So uh, I love I love data, and I love collect that, collecting that data on myself. But so I don't really know how to use it. Uh, do you prescribe the more data is is better? I think so. Yeah. I think so. Uh, I think that we'll learn how to use the data as time right. goes on. Yeah. yeah, there's there's so much uh, funding going into analytics platforms right. and really trying to get smart about being able to turn this data into to gold in, yeah. in terms of impacting outcomes, changing behavior. So, um, wonderful. Well, thank you for all the great work that you do. And uh, thank you for sharing some of your insights with us. And sure. uh, look forward to seeing you uh, hopefully on the West Coast soon. Sounds good. Thanks.